Okay, good morning, everyone. This is Peter at AppSheet, and I'm joined by my teammate, Jen. Good morning, everyone. And uh, we want to get started with uh, AppSheet office hours this morning. It is Tuesday, March 24th in Seattle. And um, uh, we're really glad to have everyone here this morning. We've got a lot that we'd like to get through and share ideas. But just um, as some housekeeping for getting started with office hours, um, there's the GoToWebinar control panel, which uh, has some ability to ask us questions. Um, and actually, if, uh, if anyone has the ability to just send a quick message to us, let us know that you can hear us okay and see the screen, which is just a blue slide. Um, that would be helpful to confirm. Um, but I also want to point everyone to the, our community page. So if you go to community.appsheet.com, um, there will be uh, one of the top posts. Let's see. Um, actually, it's not top post right now, but if you go to announcements and office hours, this, this thread has been linked. I think there was a message that was sent out in the go-to go to panel, control panel. Uh, Jen sent out, you can get to this post. This is what we'll be monitoring most closely for questions throughout the webinar. Uh, and it's also public so that other people can contribute uh, ideas and responses as well. So the, um, we just wanted to uh, kind of acknowledge there's, um, you know, the, the setting uh, for, for office hours is a little different than uh, the last time. A lot of us are, are working remotely or working from home or having to um, you know, just be at home and kind of take stock uh, for, for, you know, what we're doing throughout the week. Um, and the theme for uh, con for the topics this this uh, office hours is going to be sub supporting remote workers. Um, and there are a variety of different ways that we might be able to tackle that. Um, but um, yeah, I think first and foremost, we just wanted to you know acknowledge that there there are a lot of challenging things that that people are trying to. Uh, overcome right now in regards to, uh, you know, helping to support their team, their organization, um, and and just themselves. Um, and everyone is in a slightly different state. I know that uh, you know Jen and I feel pretty fortunate that we can be supporting app creators and running this webinar uh, from from home. Um, and uh, we we just hope that everyone is um, you know safe and able to um, you know keep keep doing their work. Uh, on a weekly basis, um, the 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 topics for this webinar, um, there are a variety of little things that we've pulled out that we thought might be uh, good things to discuss or share ideas around that revolve around um, you know supporting uh, uh, those those remote workers or deskless workers or just working from home, um, and and also around the theme of collaboration. So it's really hard if we're you know, as uh, a lot of us are more isolated from each other right now. And so what ways can we just more easily stay in touch with each other and get notified of what's going on uh, and stay on the same page, even if we're not uh, physically present? So that those were some of the ideas and we'll, we'll dig into the details here. Um, uh, I, 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 this, <laughs> so this, these are actually a couple other uh, folks. There are co-workers are, right now. Yeah, that are appreciative of us uh, working from home today. Although right now, uh, Bo is, is locked out of this room just so he doesn't make too much noise. But uh, how's, how's Roxy doing? Uh, she's, she's taking a nap about 10 feet from me. So I apologize to everyone if you hear a jingle jangle or uh, some type of dog vocals in the background. She'll be contributing, I'm sure, at some point today. Yeah. Not sure how helpful she'll be, but she'll provide some entertainment value, I'm sure. Yeah, this is the, so this is Roxy on the left and this is Bo on the right. Um, so anyway, um, Jen, was there anything else that uh, you want to add to get started or, or should we start diving into some of these topics? Yeah, I, I just wanted to really quickly kind of echo some of Peter's earlier sentiments. Uh, I know the world is a very different place than it was during our last office hours. And we, again, are trying to provide in our own small way, some ways that we can help all of you be more successful in this new environment. So if you feel like we're missing something or if there's 
a particular topic or feature that you come away from this with thinking, actually, I really need to know about this, please let us know and we'll make sure that we address that either in the community thread or in a follow-up session. We're probably going to be uh, in this position for a little while and anything we can do to help support you all, um, we're, we're more than happy to do. So please let us know. Um, but with that, Peter, I think you can take it away. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, and, and um, I guess a couple other thoughts that came to mind. Uh, there are, um, you know, we're working on some content, uh, some additional content that may come from the webinar and also from others on the team that are um, just trying to uh, create scenarios or help with instructions for scenarios uh, or functionality that, that might be more relevant to, um, you know, uh, new scenarios that have popped up recently. Um, so, you know, for example, um, uh, just, you know, applications that may be, um, you know, supporting, uh, keeping track of kind of day-to-day -day business, but from a different environment or from, you know, from, from, uh, from home. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of acknowledge some of these topics and then, and then let's dive into them. But, uh, so just running down the list, I wanted to start with the onboarding view. Because this is kind of how uh, this is this is a newer view. We haven't addressed it uh, too deeply, and the thought here is that uh, the onboarding view is actually a great way to get new users uh, familiar with the functionality of your application, um, and it's relatively simple to set up. It's just a new view type, and it's a great way to give people a place to start. Um, so that especially if you're in a situation where you can't uh, kind of walk someone through how to use a new tool in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, it's just helpful reminders for, okay, hey, I just got this new application, what am I supposed to do with it? Um, offline capabilities, uh, definitely there's, um, you know, this this is a very popular functionality uh, usually, but also it just may become more and more relevant as, um, you know, people may be separated from their uh, their their high quality work Wi-Fi. Yes. Um, it, Jen, Jen has particularly felt that pain the past week. <laughs> Yes. So if anybody else is experiencing that, you have uh, an empathizer here because I totally get it. <laughs> um, some other uh, uh, thoughts here are just around how to make uh, apps a little bit more collaborative. And this isn't something. This is something that's useful all the time, but I think it's just we're we're thinking about it a lot recently, which is having better insights into what people are doing and and what they're thinking about what's going on. And so let's we can actually uh, build some commenting and notification functionality. Uh, into an app I have open, um, and then uh, expanding upon the, the theme of notifications. And so we can look at some examples of just different ways of uh, making sure that people are getting notified of, uh, when things are going on and um, in the right way. Uh, and then the uh, last few items, uh, thinking more about like desktop application use. And so how, how are we making the apps dynamic um, and as useful as possible, depend, you know, whether or not I'm using it on my mobile device or on my laptop. Um, so, and then some cool ways that you can think about desktop apps, and also uh, potentially even, you know, interacting with G Suite. If you're if you're in G Suite, um, you know, how can you tie some of your apps to G Suite, or how can you? Uh, what are some quick ways of, of um, uh, you know, using Google Docs as well, side by side with AppSheet apps? Okay, so this is a lot. So we're going to try to churn through this, but um, please. Uh, you know, go ahead and add any questions right now or along the way in this office hours thread, and we'll be paying close attention to that. And we're going to uh, hop hop back and forth and make sure we address questions along the way. So to get started, this onboarding view, I have an example set up in a project management app, and and you see that I've got uh, a few different apps open. I have a, a bunch of different tabs. Um, there are three different scenarios. So one is a project management app, which if you've, if you've been in office hours before, you've probably seen it, but we're gonna work a little bit on that and add some functionality to it. I also have a, a food bank uh, management app. So the thought around there is how are we supporting volunteers that may be helping donate or contribute time to food banks? Uh, and just thinking about, okay, how are we managing that and notifying users um, uh, and members? And then uh, I also have a uh, an app that's around uh, cleaning surfaces. So this is a little bit more of like a facilities maintenance management type app. 
Um, so the, those are the, the three that we'll kind of be jumping back and forth between. And we'll, we'll start with this project management app and look at the onboarding view for it. And Peter, while you're pulling this up, um, for those that are new to AppSheet, you mentioned view types earlier. Will you quickly uh, go over what a view type is? Cool, thank you. Yeah, so so for for those folks that are brand new, which is probably about half of uh, half of the webinar, um, what I've done is I've just switched over into the editor now, and let's just do a real quick high level. This this is an application that um, I've already spent a little bit of time on on building, and there are a few different data sources connected, and when I mention view types. Um, after that data is connected and defined, and we'll look at some different ways for how this data is connected, the view types are uh, created. These are the, the different interface types. They're created by um, drawing from one of those tables connected and then defining how the end app user is going to interact with the data from that table. So when we think about view types, um, you know, there are a variety of view types and, you know, just as a quick overview, some of them that we'll look at include calendars, uh, different uh, like lists, so decks or tables, galleries if you have images, maps if you have locations, charts and dashboards. Dashboards will combine uh, multiple views into a single space. Uh, forms are essential for collecting information, so anytime that we're trying to add information back to our data source, we'll use a form. Um, cards and onboarding are newer. So cards are just a more interactive way and more visual way uh, of, of, of viewing information in your tables. And onboarding specifically is what we're gonna get started with. And <clears throat> um, we're gonna jump around a little bit, but uh, I'll try to keep coming back We'll, we'll, we'll step back and, and look a little high level of where we're coming from and what, uh, why we're making something, but then also dive in and, and look a little more granularly. So I encourage everyone to just stop, you know, go ahead and ask anything like, you know, why, why, why are we, uh, you know, uh, if, I, if I skip over anything, please, please call it out. And really quickly, I have uh, two individuals who are saying that they are having difficulty hearing sound. Are, is anyone else experiencing this? Yeah, keep us posted on the yeah. quality. Um, I might keep moving along, but then if we if we hear more issues, just uh, keep us posted. Okay, we're good on sound. Thanks, everyone. So the, <clears throat> this onboarding view specifically has been created. And really, um, it's this onboarding view is what you would expect in a typical kind of like SaaS or app interface. Um, I think if anyone that has been you know, using a smartphone for a long time and installing applications, you've probably come across when you first open up the application, there will be some pages that you kind of swipe through that just give you some getting started information. And that's what onboarding means to us. And the way that you can create that into your AppSheet app, and I'm just going to demonstrate what it looks like in this particular app. So this project board app starts with this onboarding view. It's got an animated uh, GIF, and then it's got a few different screens that you can move your way through. And in this case, the onboarding view is actually giving instructions for how this application was created. But in a if you're if you're creating an app, you know, for your end users, the instructions would ideally um, be giving them uh, details about what the what the application is actually going to do and how to use it. And so then when you're done with that, then it just drops you back onto that default uh, view. And the you know the thought with this is it's um, just user adoption as a whole is a is a great big challenge that we're all facing in different ways. And so as you become an app creator. That is a concept that uh, isn't the, it's not necessarily always top of mind. You know, getting your application users to be really comfortable using what you've built uh, is is challenging. And so, creating this onboarding view is just one step to try to uh, help with that. This onboarding view, just like all the other views, it starts by looking at well, what table of data is this view going to be based of? 
And in this case, we have an onboarding table. And so if we look at the data source for this app, which is just a Google Sheet for, for, the, for this demo purpose, we're just using Google Sheets because that's easiest to switch back and forth to and visualize. Um, but the data sources, again, right, they could be an Excel spreadsheet hosted somewhere. It could be a SQL database. You could be in Cloud SQL. Um, you could even be uh, integrated with like Salesforce or Smartsheet. In this case, we have projects and people, and we have an onboarding table. And so what you just observed in that onboarding preview is simply being drawn from this table. And you can see there's image, title, and description. And, and then the images here, this is for this first one, uh, that image, that animated GIF is hosted actually in the community. So I just linked to that. Otherwise, I uploaded static uh, PNGs. And so for each of these views that you see, if I go back to the onboarding view, this one, uh, oh, let's see, that's the last one. So you can see that there's a title and a description. And when, you, when you've selected that view type, I've placed it in the menu, and then I've uh, set some of the options. It's real simple. I'm just pointing the, uh, the image to be the image column from that table. The title, the title, the short blurb is going to be a description. And then in this case, I have the option for a second uh, short blurb because we've got, we've got blank space here to use still, but I don't have anything else to say. So you could add um, additional details there if you wanted to. And that's it for onboarding. Um, I think this is just a good thing to call out and good thing to be familiar with. And I would definitely test this out if you're trying to roll out uh, any application, especially if it's not immediately obvious how to use it um, uh, uh, to, your, to your users. Jen, any, uh, any other thoughts on that or should we keep moving along? Let's keep moving along. Um, the only note, and Peter, I'll mention while you pull up your next application to talk about, um, the only note on that, you probably saw that there are several different view types, and if you have any questions about those, um, we can post some support articles in the community, but know that your view types are all dependent on their, their performance, at least, on how you structure your data. And we have a number of really helpful um, sections in previous webinars we've run. If you, again, have any questions on that, just let us know, and we'll point you to some resources to help set you up for success with that. Cool. Yeah, and we've got, <clears throat> so I've just opened up an entirely new application. And this one, uh, is, I think we can, let's just think about offline usage. Um, but we'll also poke around and, and look a little bit at how this data has been set up and how, it's, how views have been created off of it. Um, so in this scenario, different app definition here that we're looking at, different uh, tab of the editor. And this is something I made that's really just like a, surf, uh, I'm calling it Surface Sanitizer app. But in reality, it's basically a way of going through and uh, going through a series of checkpoints for things that need to be cleaned throughout a house or an office or a workspace. Um, and so this is very similar. This is in line with the scenario of like uh, just uh, any range of inspections type application. Um, and so a lot of this comes down to, do you have a punch list or a checklist of things to do? Um, that need to be done over regular interval or, or um, uh, you know, over a series of uh, a particular series of, of time. So in this, in this case, we have a few different tables connected. So we've got buildings, every building has rooms and every room has different checkpoints that you're supposed to go through and clean. So in this case, the AppSheet office has a conference room and um, every uh, the one checkpoint in this conference room is the conference phone, and so we're going to make sure that that's sanitized every day. Um, now, in this case, right, we have a map view. So, in this map view, is looking at the buildings table, and it's just drawing the locations from the buildings. So, let's actually like look at that table. We got two buildings. One is the AppSheet office, and one is just a uh, boat tours office that happens to be in the neighborhood. 
and then rooms within each office. And so this is a deck view. And then uh, those checkpoints. And this is another deck view that's just been grouped by office. And so we need to add some more checkpoints. But the main functionality with this app is you're going through and as you select this action, you can see, so you can see it's accumulating how many hours since it was last cleaned. And as I select the action, yes, I clean the phone. Okay, uh, turn green and it says zero hours, zero minutes since cleaned. We'll take a look at um, you know just how that functionality was built. But that's that's the main premise with this. And as I'm moving throughout a building or in a basement, um, having offline functionality for this app might become useful. And so we just wanted to point everyone uh, to the behavior tab where there's offline sync tab. And this is where you have some real um, simple toggles that you can influence how the application is synced between your data source and your application. Um, and you can kind of specify uh, some different parameters for how your application, when it's in the hands of those end users, behaves. Um, now, every scenario is slightly different. Um, and you'll probably see a default setting that looks very similar to this. Um, but the uh, some things to think about are, do you want your data to load every time the app is opened? Um, do you want, uh, you know, a delayed sync so that it syncs, uh, you know, kind of over time in the background? The automatic updates. So this is if, uh, for example, if you have many people collaborating in this application, and uh, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, if the user using this particular application hasn't uh, synced their app in a little while, uh, that it just automatically syncs in the background. So if someone else has gone through and cleaned the building entrance, then in the background that will update for me so I can be aware of it. And then um, I think what's especially relevant right now is, you know, can the app start one offline? And are you storing content for offline use? And so if the, you know, if it's not super critical that, uh, you know, this, this user have the, the most up-to-date status of a particular item, um, and they're, they might be walking through a building and they need to just open up, they need to make sure that if they're in a particular floor, in a particular, uh, you know, uh, building that they have the functionality app ready to go then I consider toggling on, making sure the app is functional and offline. Um, most of the time, this becomes useful when we're talking about uh, you know, big buildings and limited uh, internet connection, uh, or very frequently, this is for like field service uses usage. And so if you are um, in kind of a remote area, uh, a lot of energy um, uh, scenarios come to mind where um, you may be working for the day without connection to cell service, and then you come back in the evening, uh, then all of that will sync back to your original data source. Um, and just the, the, the specifics of how that data, how the app is available and how the data syncs can be defined here. Awesome. So Peter, can you talk a little bit on where data lives? Um, so if somebody is uploading data that they're trying to sync offline, is it stored in AppSheet or is it stored in a different source? Yeah, so really to drive this home, and let's, let's, let's actually show an example of that, that uh, you know, from the beginning, when I started making this application, what you're doing is you're connecting these tables to, to AppSheet, and we'll look at the tables again. So we've got buildings, we've got rooms in each building, and we've got checkpoints. We need to add more checkpoints. Um, and actually there are people too. We've got some information about people here that are gonna be checking all these rooms. And this data will always live here in this data source, even after I've connected it to AppSheet. So what you're doing here is you're just, you're just uh, connecting and pointing your application to that data. And then depending upon how you're allowing users to interact, with it, um, then it'll be updated back in that original data source. 
So a couple things to keep in mind, right? When you connect a table, you have the ability to defining, okay, in this application, uh, will users be able to update, add to, or delete these checkpoints? In this case, we're allowing adds and updates, but no deletion. If I add the table for people, which is it's suggesting because it sees that extra sheet, it's going to add that table. And maybe I want to set this as read only because our HR team actually manages this, this data. Then um, throughout the application now, uh, when I hit save, if I build a view, which it did automatically, right? So now AppSheet saw that a new table was connected. And based on the content in that table, it, it creates a view for you just as a place to get started. And now when I'm looking at this list of users, I have the ability, right? It's created some uh, what we call actions to email, uh, to email the user or to, to look at the headshot. Which we'll have to we'll have to define a little bit better, um, but I don't have the ability to edit these users or delete them. Whereas if I'm looking at the checkpoints, I do have the ability to like add new checkpoints, for example. So anyway, this is all all to say that uh, when um, those tables are connected and you've defined how they can be interacted with, then as you're building that those views the views in the application. And you're adding content, so let's actually add a checkpoint. And we'll make this, we'll add to the AppSheet office, and we'll add a checkpoint to the training room, and we'll call this uh, training table. I don't have an image offhand. Oh, maybe we can look at it. We'll look at the table. I'm just gonna save a really grainy image of the table. Okay, done. We're gonna go ahead and add that table. And it's setting time since last cleaned. So some of these fields we can probably remove or hide from the form. I'm gonna go ahead and save that checkpoint. So I just added a new checkpoint. And as it syncs in the background, it gets added as a new row to this table. And you can see that image has been uploaded and actually saved to uh, a folder in my Google Drive. So it's gonna be in, it's gonna be near this particular data source, uh, depending on how you have your data organized. And so now, right, the, the that data, that image that I uploaded and the name that I defined it only lived in your application for the, um, you know, as it was cached and then sent back to the data source. And now we can look, um, let's see, what was that? The training room. Now you can see the training room has one checkpoint that needs to be cleaned and that's the training table. Um, Jen, does that, does that help uh, uh, kind of make that clear how, how the data is connected? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um, I do have a question um, from the community, if that's yeah. okay to run by you now. Yeah, um, so. so one of our users is asking, would it be possible to make a view read only for some users and let other people add edit? Great, awesome question. So um, let's just think, uh, since we're looking at the rooms here right now, let's let's look at that. We have an action right now that uh, gives me the ability to add new rooms to a building to say, okay, well, this, this new room, let's, let's call it like the main office area, um, needs to be added because we're gonna need some to clean some spots throughout it. Um, maybe only certain people should have the ability to add rooms. Um, and so maybe there are gonna be a few people that are managing the space and determining what needs to be cleaned. And then uh, everybody else will just be going through and uh, you know, checking whether or not it's cleaned. So this particular action, the ability to add new rooms, that's what we can um, give granular control over. Now, from the start, there is, you can specify that at your table level. 
And so the ability to update, add, or delete uh, rows to that table can be defined with an expression. So throughout AppSheet, when you see this little flask, this is where you can jump in and with the help of the expression assistant, you can define what, you know, who specifically can update or make changes to the table. Now, uh, we'll, we'll look at expressions in a little bit here, but let's do it actually a slightly easier way. In this case, let's look in behavior and in actions, you'll see these are all the different buttons or, or what we call actions that are available throughout the application. And so if I look at rooms, the rooms table, I can see that this system generated action called add, that's this action right here. And actually I can check that by, you know, just toggling the icon. So if I would do a little, if I made it square, you can see that updates it immediately over here. So I know that's the one. And if I go down to behavior, I can specify to only show this action if the user who's logged in meets a certain criteria. So in this case, um, you know, if I'll, I'll actually think about, uh, there are a variety of different ways you can do this. Um, and we'll actually talk about how you can maybe you know, depending on if you're on your mobile device or on a desktop, uh, you can make things appear or disappear. But let's say um, in this case, user role equals admin. So we'll save that. And what I've done here is then as you're managing your users and you invite someone, so I'll just invite, I'll invite Jen. And I'll spare her the email. <laughs> and then in her user role, I'll go ahead and change it to admin. Now that's one of a few different ways that you could do that. But now when Jen logs in, she'll be the only one that can actually add rooms. Um, and, and, then, um, and then anyone else that I invite, for example, if I invite the entire domain, if I say everybody else in AppSheet now uh, can also have access to this application, then Jen will be the one managing that particular functionality and have visibility to that action. So I hope that's clear. There, there are definitely a variety of other ways that you can do that. And throughout, as you're defining your data um, and getting into the specifics of how your columns are defined um, and also how your views show up um, and how your actions show up, there are all sorts of different ways you can apply that show if condition. Um, all right, let's keep... Uh, Let's keep moving along here. The, um, okay, so I got distracted with some of the other functionality of that app and maybe we'll revisit it. <clears throat> and actually, I'm, I wanna make one more point while we're here. It's a little bit off, off the agenda. But in this case, uh, something that's really interesting about this application is the user settings. I'm using the user settings to determine how often should I be prompted to clean a particular item? So in my user, every, every user who has this application has the ability to log in and say, I want uh, every 24 hours, I should, I, I should have to get an alert or I should be notified some way that I need to clean a certain point. So what ends up happening is if I look at the building entrance and I see there's one checkpoint, the door handles that need to be cleaned, I'm logging how long it's been since the last time someone clicked this action. And this gets into an agenda item a little bit further down. But because this, um, I don't know, hopefully you can see this, because it's already been 39 hours, then I'm using a format rule to change the color to red. And I'm also passing, I'm also looking at this using an expression, a virtual column and expression. I'm also seeing it from here too, saying like the building entrance has at least one item that has exceeded its time uh, for, for cleaning. I'm using these, these, ver these uh, format rules in a couple of different ways here. So then um, the door handles right now, that value, it's, cal it's just calculating this. So if we look at checkpoints, I've added a virtual column. And this virtual column 
which is right here, time since last cleaning, is a duration type column. And the expression I'm using is real simply just um, what is the date and time right now minus the date and time when it was last checked. And so last checked is simply whenever I click this action, it's saving um, it's saving that date and time here. And so then it'll just keep updating this every time I check that. So let's see, what are we, we're looking at the door handles right now, right? You can see it was last checked uh, on the 22nd. So this, these door handles are getting dirty. And so if I go through, I see this is red and I go ahead and clean the door handles and I go ahead and check, uh, check it. Yep, it's cleaned. Okay, so now we're back down to, um, you know, it was cleaned zero hours, zero minutes ago. And uh, and you can see now that it's been updated to the 24th. Um, okay, so now this, this format rule and the way that this is kind of alerting me to the fact that this is an acceptable amount of time since it was cleaned, it's just all based on what time I have in here. So if I wanted to say it has to be cleaned every minute, it's a little extreme, but if I made that update, now all of a sudden, uh, you know, the item in my conference room, well, I was cleaned 15 minutes ago, it needs to be cleaned again. So just wanted to throw that, out that example of, you know, how you can, uh, let's see, move back to 24. Um, think about some of these notifications or, or um, you know, using uh, user settings um, to kind of influence some of your app behavior. Um, definitely, uh, if you want to dive deeper, ask ask more questions about it. We'll make sure that this app is also shared as a sample so you can look at it closer. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. All right. So a big one that uh, I needed to start doing right now is let's look at how to make an app a little bit more collaborative. I think this is, a, this is probably one of the most important topics for um, just kind of our current state and just things that might make an application more useful if everybody is uh, uh, more distanced from each other. And I want to go back to the project management app. The thought here is we actually have a pretty, and I'll actually open this up um, so it's easier to see. This is a pretty uh, useful application. It's just tracking projects through kind of a, a standard Kanban style uh, board. And we've got to, projects that need to do, we've got in progress, and we've got done. And I can click into each of these projects and get some details, and I can see who owns the project. Um, but I made this application when we were all sitting right next to each other, and it was easier to just kind of like chat about uh, the status or ask questions about any of these projects. And what I'd like to do right now is real quickly just live add uh, some commenting functionality, commenting and notification uh, to this app. And I'm going to start uh, start with these steps. And in the meantime, Jen, if anyone's asking questions, go ahead and interrupt, and we can uh, we can prep for them. All right. But so here's the app. Here's the data that this uh, uh, project management app is based off of. We've got projects, we've got people, and we've got that onboarding view. Let's go ahead and add a table for comments. We're going to go ahead and say. Uh, uh, we need an ID for each comment. We need a comment, uh, the actual text content. Let's say the date time that was written and who wrote the comment. Um, I think that'll be good enough. Sometimes I like to include like a link or the ability to upload a file. Let's do that. File and link. So now in my comments for these projects, I can add a little bit more context maybe. So, okay, I've got a table set up. The last thing I need here is I need to be able to associate these comments to a project. And so um, I want this project ID. So actually, let's start with that. Oops, is there a column? Okay. And and just um, an FYI for everyone, what Peter's doing right now 
is designing his data or structuring his data in a way that will help enforce the view type that he's trying to achieve on his application. Thanks. Yeah. And so let me make sure I'm, I'm looking for, I'm just going to add this table. And so what I did is I just looked for that Google sheet and it sees that, okay, yep, you've got a new sheet there. I'm going to want to update, add, and delete these comments. So let's go ahead and add that table. And the first thing I do when I add a table is go into the columns and I make sure that these columns are defined the right way. What I mean by that is the project ID, well, first and foremost, um, that's not going to be the key to this table. I'm going to want the comment ID to be the key. And I'm going to want the comment itself to be the label. So what shows up throughout the app. Now the project ID, I want that to actually reference the project table. So I'm going to go ahead and change this column type to ref. And oop, I'm going to look at the projects table. So all this is saying is when I'm making a new comment, what project is that comment going to be associated with? So the project ID will be, I'll draw from something on the projects table. The date time, uh, it picked it up, it recognized date, but it didn't select date time. It has a tendency to do that. Actually the date time, I want it to automatically, it thought I wanted automatically to say today, but I actually want now, which will be the date, today's date and time. So that will be the initial value. Um, and actually going back to the ID, the project ID, initial value, I don't want unique ID there. I want the unique ID to be the comment ID. And then as I'm adding new comments, I actually don't really care if that comment ID shows up. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hide that. The author, actually I, I, I want the author to also reference a different table, which is gonna be the people table. So the author will always be someone in my people table in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and point to that table. And I'm gonna make the initial value of the author uh, user email. So what it's saying here is like, look for, oops, user email. Oh no, that's okay. Um, so look for who is logged in right now and then make them the default value for this uh, uh, author. And then the file and the link. Okay, so file is file type. That's great. That gives me the ability to upload a file. And then link, I'm actually change that to URL. All right, great. Let's save it. And then let's uh, let's see how it's been applied. So now I get some warnings up here. Hmm. Comment ID was long text. Okay, so I need to. I actually just want it to be text. Now go ahead. I want to make that still the key. And that gave me some other warnings. So let me just double check that. I think that that should be good then. Hard. All right. So what we have now is now, and it saw that new um, that new table added, and so it created a couple other views. In this case, I don't think I want these other views. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove them. It saw that there's a date and time in in that table, and so it created a calendar view for me. Let me go ahead and I want this to be a little bit more specific. Okay, so now if we if we look at this particular uh, prepare key account plan with Jen, it's in progress. Let me go ahead and add, um, actually, we need an ability right now to add comments. We don't have that yet. And so the way to do, the first way to think about this is adding a form. I'm going to say I want a form to add items to my comments table. All right, so now we have a new comment. 
you can see those fields that we just defined when we added that table, we have the ability to select a project ID. So which project are we commenting on? Well, we got a host a partner webinar. Um, let's see. It's automatically capturing today's date and time. Now the author, remember this was, it's referencing that people table. So it's finding, it saw my email and it says, ah, that looks like it's Peter from the people table. And again, that it's, it's identifying the email is just the key, but it's displaying the, what I've set in the table as a label. And in this case, the label for the people table is the headshot and the first name. And then I have the ability to upload a file and link, but uh, I don't, I don't think that's relevant. Or maybe if I had an agenda file, I'd upload that, but I'll just go ahead and save it. And now as that's syncing in the background, right, that'll be my first comment now in the comments table. There it is. So now if I go back into, let's see, so the partner webinar, when I look at the details for this partner webinar, though, there aren't comments showing up. And so what I want to do is, if I look at the projects detail view, you can see right now, this is how uh, this particular view, this detail view is defined for projects. So the main image, the image styles in the background, that's what we're seeing here, and it's displaying the name, description, and owner of this project. Name, description, and owner. Um, and so this is actually a little bit more complicated than that because we've got slices. That's why the, the status is showing up. But there we go. So if I add related comments, sorry, let me just. Okay, so I'm going to backtrack just a second. And this is, this is getting in the weeds for, for a second. But what I'm looking at here, and what I, what I just stumbled over was in order to create this Kanban style view, we've created slices of the table. What this means is we're looking at the same projects table for each of these views, but I've created slices to say, uh, you know, only show projects that are, have a to-do status, only show projects that have an in-progress status and done status. So these essentially are like three other new tables, virtual tables, so to speak, that we're also using for our views. So when I, as I scroll down here, I can see just, you know, kind of like our, our basic projects table detail and form, but I also have these, um, uh, that have been created off the slice. And you can see how it's specified, you know, the view is made off of the slice. And so now as I'm going back and trying to add, make sure those comments get incorporated into these uh, project detail views, I'm gonna have to go in and say like, all right, let's look at the to-do projects. The to-do uh, is down here. The detail view or the to-do projects that does include the status. That's what I missed earlier. And I'm going to go ahead. I want to make sure that each of those, each of these views also contain related comments. So if I go ahead and save this. And I'm just going to open this up in new view. And so now what you can see is that I just updated the app. When I look at the details of one of these projects, it now has related comments. And I can go ahead and add a comment here. Uh, let's see, is the report ready? I'll save it. Now that comment is in line here. You can define how these show up and in what order, um, but that comment, these comments will now accumulate across all these projects. Um, Jen, I want to get to, I know we're, we've got 10 minutes. I want to call out how we can send some notifications off of these comments. Um, but I also want to keep in mind that, you know, I've been, I've been churning through a lot of this stuff and I want to make sure that if anyone has 
questions, go ahead and call them out. So Jen, feel free to interrupt me. Yeah, I, really, really quickly. Um, there was a couple yeah. questions earlier about desktop versus mobile versus tablet views. Cool. And cool. Peter went through a lot of stuff really quickly in that five to six minute section. But what you're actually looking at right here is a desktop view of this application. And when you're in your editor, Peter, if you can go back to the editor, on the right hand side, this section that Peter's adjusting is what's called the emulator. And that's where you see changes made to your application in real time. This current view is mobile. The center option that he was playing with earlier is your tablet view. And then when you click the outer link button, that's what takes you to the desktop view. So you're able to see what different users would be seeing in your application. So Hopefully that answers that question for you. Um, also, just a couple of critical things that um, Peter mentioned earlier that I'll repost in the community are um, data slices. It's a really great trick to have up your sleeve in, sleeve in application development. I'll post a support article on that. Um, column types, um, there's been a few questions about references. And yeah. column types that he was touching on in the data section earlier are an, again another really important tool to understand in terms of how your data is displayed and i'll post a support article on that um, in terms of specific questions though peter i've got a great question regarding um, the onboarding view we touched on earlier uh, and okay. the question is how do i set up the order in which it shows the information um, is it set up through app through app sheet or through the data yeah. Oh, great question. So the um, the easiest way, just right off off the bat, is to just order it by your columns. And so you can see that uh, that's the order that I had set up. So right off the bat, that's probably the easiest way to think about it and the easiest way to reorganize it. Um, in regards to how your data comes in and in that view type specifically, let's see. Um, there is not a way of defining it in the view type, but I think if you wanted to get technical with it, you could change, you could specify at the table settings or in the column settings. Um, store. No, I can't think, I, I, I would just focus on that original data source for the order of your onboarding views. Perfect. Um, Okay, cool. And I want to acknowledge, you know, we're getting close on time. I want to, I want to build some alerts off of this. Okay. And then, um, Jen, I, I'll be uh, able to hang around and answer, do some Q and A after the end of the hour. Um, but then I also want to acknowledge that anything we aren't able to get to right now, we'll be answering in the community. Um, okay. So, just to kind of uh, finish this particular topic, we have comments now. But if people are leaving comments in the application, um, you know, unless unless the other user is looking at this particular project and refreshing, uh, they're not going to see these new comments added uh, live. So if it's time sensitive, and especially as you're thinking about everybody being, um, you know, remote, the next step would be to go into the behavior tab. Let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit, and uh, look at your workflows. And this is a real simple thing to set up, and it's actually pretty cool to test out. And so, what I want to do here is, I'm going to go. I'm going to assume that everybody has this application on their mobile device. Um, and well, and I'm going to add a workflow rule. I'm going to call this push notifications. Comment push notifications. I'm going to say every time a comment is added. Now I could add a condition here, but I, I think for now, I'm just gonna say every time a comment is added. Um, let's see, yeah. Then I have some options here for what I'm doing with this workflow. Now the most common is to create an email uh, alert or notification. You can get really granular with uh, what emails are sent from your application. You can even build custom templates. You can, you can have attachments in your email. This is a whole other session that we'll go through. Uh, there's a lot of content here and how you can customize these emails. But you can also send push notifications through your app and anyone else who has the app installed. And so in this case, I want a push notification to go to 
um, the owner of the project. Okay, so sorry. So now how would I do that? I'm looking at the comment table. So I don't really have the details of the project. I'm gonna have to draw this from the projects table to know who's the actual owner of the project because I want them to get a not notification that a comment was left. So I need to write an expression for this. And what I'll do is, um, I know that I have the project ID, right? So th these are all the fields from my comments table. And the way that I can link to get details from the project, from the projects table, is I say, all right, well, I'll dereference it and say, look at the project ID and I think the field is owner. So if I look at the data, I go to projects. There. So what it's saying is here, just go look at that table that we're getting the project ID from, because that's a reference, and then draw the column for owner. So whatever the value is for owner, which is going to be the email, that's who I'm going to send a notification to. And it's okay if the um, you know, even though it's an email, it'll recognize, okay, well, what device is that email associated with? I'm going to say new comment. And then in the body of that notification, I'm going to use some slightly different expression here. This will be the content of the comment. So you can see it's that column structure, but for the templates that we're writing, you use the little, uh, what are these called, Jen? Side carrots? I think so, yeah. I will call them side carrots. Um, and so now when I've saved, saved this, now every time that a new comment is added, I think we need a new draft. Save it. I'm really excited when I make my comments. Um, So now that's been added, that just sent a, a push notification to me. And now, unfortunately, I can't share my mobile device screen right now. We do have some examples of how those show up in the actual uh, device. So these are just some other examples from the food bank scenario. But I wanted to make sure to call that out because I think stringing these things together, adding a commenting table is really straightforward, but then also thinking about how you're sending notifications. So this could be for comments but it could be for all sorts of other scenarios where it's helpful to just give a little bit of awareness um, to other people that are involved in the application. Um, and I think it can really make or break, especially as you're thinking about onboarding or keeping people connected and up to speed with what's going on. Um, there are just some really easy ways of setting these up. Push notifications are just an easy place to start. You have to be a little conscious of how many you're sending because you know, if, if they're, uh, you know, if everything is a notification, then nothing is, so to speak. But um, uh, I think this is a great area then to start digging into and, and starting with the push notifications, but also spending time looking at emails and how to customize those. That's a whole area that uh, can be really valuable. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll leave it right there. I expect that there will be follow-up questions for this notification in some of the workflow areas that we might be able to get to. Um, let me look at the agenda real quick. One thing, Jen, you mentioned a question about just mobile or browser use. And I, I want to end on thinking about desktop versus mobile usage. And I think we can keep doing it in the setting of this application. Um, and then, uh, so something, <clears throat> I just added a commenting view here, which is a new form. Let me go ahead and stick that in the menu. I'm going to change the icon is not very relevant. Comment with a plus sign. That looks like new comment. Okay, great. So now it's showing up there. Um, so, all right, let me... Pause for a second. I'm just going to grab, as we think about, um, just grabbing a formula real quick that we can use. 
Actually, we'll just switch. I'm going to switch apps. Just so we can call out one more application that will be available as a sample app um, for people to explore. But we didn't really talk about this one that much or at all. But I do want to call it out because it's a great example of how an application, how you can make an application relevant for mobile and desktop use alike um, in some real simple ways. And so this application, um, it's got a directory of food banks. And for each food bank, there are a list of volunteers that are related. So the tables that are connected are food banks, members, and then also alerts that we're sending out to those volunteers. Now, this, this may be something that like a, a volunteer or someone managing the food bank would use to help uh, send notifications. So they may be using it on their mobile device, but it also, you know, this particular view may not be the best if they're trying to manage this on a desktop. And so that's, that's the scenario we're at right now. And so in order to support that, the mobile and desktop usage, this is an example. If I pull this app up just in a web browser where the map is really big, the list of members is all to the left. And let's see the alerts, you know, the views are not quite as ideal when you're on desktop. So what we've done is created a, a dashboard view, which are, if we go back to our view types, this is the ability to combine multiple views into a single screen. So very simply, when I select dashboard type, um, the view entries in this case are, I've picked from a, a list of the food banks and then also that members view. So I'm gonna have those side by side in my dashboard view. And then I've chosen interactive mode for that. And I put this view in the menu. So desktop dashboard. Now, when I like when I'm on my mobile device, I have the option of viewing it, but probably not my first view. Uh, that's less ideal for mobile. But if I'm looking at the desktop view for this, and I go to the menu item, and I look for desktop dashboard. Now I've got the whole list of food banks, and when I click on one of them, it just shows me that list of relevant volunteers for each one. And that's because it's interactive. But so the real value here is having multiple views combined into one place. Now you could have a few dozen, you could have like, you know, half a dozen different views combined into one place. It could be charts and maps and gallery views that are all interactive. This is a good place to start. The last piece to this that I'll just call out is when I open this app on my mobile device, I want it to just start here on the map. Um, or maybe, let's see, the alerts. But when I open on my desktop, I want it to open to this dashboard view. So I just want it to be as quickly as relevant to the user as possible. And the way that I'll do that is in my UX options, I have the ability of defining a starting view. Now, this will just default to whatever the first view you create. But if you click the expression builder, you can apply a little expression here um, that's very useful. Uh, it's called context. And what this is looking at is, okay, what is the context that this app that this user uh, is using the application in? So we'll say um, context host. So what is the um, you know what is actually hosting the application? If the host equals a device, so we've wrapped this in an if statement. If the host is a device, which is saying a mobile device, then make the default view food banks. And that's kind of like our main uh, mobile map view. If not, if it's not device, which means it's probably a web browser, then make the default view the desktop dashboard. And so when I open it up in my web app here, this dashboard becomes the first thing I see. All right, so I wanted to just call that out. And uh, again, this will be available just to help you kind of walk through this expression or think about ideas. Um, some expressions like this, right? you can apply it at the view level as well, the show if. Um, and so you can think about, well, you know, 
maybe uh, you know if the person's on a mobile device, just don't show this view at all. Or if they are, uh, make sure they show it. If the user is an admin, then you can show it. If not, don't show it. Um, if if today is Tuesday, then show this view. If it's Thursday, show a different view. Um, all sorts of things you can do there to make the content of the application pretty dynamic. Um, okay. Very cool. Thank you, Peter. And I think that's a good place to end. Unless there's anything Great. critical you want to show before we wrap up. Um, I will show one more thing while we have you. The last so, piece. Oh, yeah. I, I want to add one quick note. We are over by just a few moments. If you have to jump off, please feel free. Um, I will be posting this webinar on the community thread, just an FYI for those that have to jump off. So uh, you will be able to access this content. Cool. Yeah, so the last piece to this, we have uh, now this food bank um, desktop application that's ready to go. It's mobile or desktop. And I'm just going to go ahead and I want to make a shortcut for when I'm opening this up on my app so that I can open it up from my bottom, from the, from the launcher bar or just from my desktop. And so what I want to do is I'm just going to make sure that my logo makes sense. The app logo, a house, eh, kind of makes sense. I'll go ahead and look for, um, I added a food bank, oops. Um, I added a new icon here. There it is. That's just, I'm just looking in my Google Drive right now. I'm gonna update that icon, I'm gonna hit save. And then hopefully, this is gonna be a really quick turnaround, so I'm not sure if it's gonna populate in my browser right away. Um, it might not, it might need a little more sec, a couple more seconds, but if you're in Chrome, you go to your menu, you got more tools, and create shortcut. Oop, did I lose it? There it is. And it did find that new icon. And so I can change the name. I can say open as a window and create. And now I have a standalone application that I can go ahead and um, you know drop that icon wherever. It looks like it's still remembering my old icon right now because I've added it previously. Um, but now I have a standalone application that's running uh, in my desktop that sometimes I like just having open as a full full screen view when that's what I want to focus on. So um, just some ways that you can think about um, these standalone desktop applications. Okay, with that, thank you, Jen, for um, uh, the reminder. I think there are definitely some uh, some additional items that I think we'll follow up with next office hours but also there are a ton of good questions. And I'm gonna be spending some time in the community on that particular thread, um, posting some answers and ideas. So just as a place to end here, um, I want a reminder, this particular, uh, we'll go ahead and send that out as another uh, chat, but look in the community, it's gonna be at the top of the thread, look for office hours. And in this thread, we'll be trying to get to some of the questions we weren't able to get to. And I'll also update this particular post with links to these applications, these sample applications that you can look at or copy yourself and explore uh, some of the functionality. Um, Jen, was there anything uh, else you'd like to add? Uh, I just want to say thank you all for joining us and stay safe, everyone. Um, times are a little odd right now, but stay safe and, and take care of your team. Yeah, we really appreciate you, uh, you know, uh, showing up for the webinar and, and, and using AppSheet, and we really hope that some of these ideas are, are useful for, for any situation you're dealing with right now. Um, please stay in touch. Let us know if there are any other ways that we can help out. Um, with that, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, everyone.